Hello, everyone. It's time to eat, drink, and be merry with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Happy March, everybody. It is. It's March 1st. Yay. And the first way you should celebrate a new month is by having wine. Um, it is wine time with Peggy. Everyone, welcome to Big Blend Radio's Eat, Drink, Be Merry show. Every first Wednesday, we get together with Peggy Fiendaka. She is the co-owner of LDV Winery, along with her husband, Kurt. Uh, he's the winemaker, and she's the brand manager. And she teaches us all about wine, wine pairings, wine tastings, and tells us what's going on in a vineyard every like every season it's pretty fascinating uh, they are based in arizona their tasting room is in scottsdale arizona and then the vineyard is in the chiricahua foothills of southeast arizona so it's a little bit southeast of tucson and um, it's a beautiful region lots of wineries lots of nature outdoor adventure and a ton of history too so go to their website ldvwinery.com and Today, we're going to be talking about spring and bud break and all that good stuff. So welcome back, Peggy. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. So I heard today that we're going to talk about bud break. And whenever you talk about bud, some people may go the other way. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we're, not yeah. talk, we're, talking about, we're talking about grapes today and, and vineyards, right? That's Absolutely. Yes, bud break. Yes. Springtime is a magical time in the vineyard. Uh, usually this year, it's a little cold still. Oh. Um, but uh, that's when the vines really start to come alive. And I think I talked recently about pruning, winter mm -hmm. pruning that we just did, where we take off all the dead growth and, and prune the vines to eight different positions along the vines. And then, um, but, and, and also to have the um, uh, positions per each of those um, along the vine. So that's where the, the grapes are going to come out of. So after that happens, what we have is these little tiny little cotton balls start to form where those cuts were made on the, um, on the vine. And then what we're looking for during March usually mm -hmm. is little moisture starts to occur at those positions along where those cuts were break. And that's a signal that the vine is sending up all of its nutrients from the from its uh, roots into the entire vine. And it's getting spreading the water and moisture throughout the vine. So we want to have that hydration to begin to happen. And once uh, it's warm enough where the sun angle is such a way and the ground is warming up a little bit and the vines are getting those nutrients, foliage starts to happen. Little tiny little buds start to break at those positions that we we have along the vine. And uh, it's an exciting time because that's the beginning of our, our uh, growing season, basically. So basically the, the vineyard, well, you, you had to have planned that, right? When you planted the vineyard, knowing where the sun is and you know, Correct. where's the sun? Where's the moon? All of that. Like, yeah. you know, do the little dance around there. Did you dance around the vineyard? Come on. No. Well, yes, we were pretty excited when we first planted. We were dancing yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Now it's a little bit, oh my God, there's so yeah. much to do. <laughs> I know. Well, spring, you know, it's like, yeah, you get a little dormancy and then here it comes. But I almost yeah. feel like when you're talking that the, the plant itself is not going to send its babies out until it's warm. It's like a mother hen is not going to let the chicks out into the cold. It wants the heating lamp right. of the sun. Right, so. exactly. So in March, and bud break typically occurs in all vineyards in, uh, in like the California and in the Northwest, at least domestically, it usually occurs in March, uh, okay. early March. And um, then you can anticipate maybe about 40 to 80 days after bud break occurs that you begin to think about harvest. But um, this year, because of how cold it is, I don't know if you saw some of those photographs of snow in it's Napa insane. Valley, and right? It was crazy. And so we're anticipating even a, a winter storm tomorrow in the vineyard. So we haven't seen bud break yet, and we're at early March. But um, so we're going to, we, we're shifting from our winter watering to our spring watering because one of the things you want to do is keep the vines hydrated and also keep the ground wet because we do want to prolong 
or put off, excuse me, bud break as, as, as late as possible because we could get another freeze. And if, if the vineyard freezes, if the weather gets down to below 32 degrees, those tiny little buds that are starting to pop out will die They'll, um, and will not recover. We will not get grapes at those. Ooh, that's a creepy time. Like It's a scary time. This time of year is very scary. This is when you might check into the bourbon instead of the wine. <laughs> right, exactly. Because you have, you have no control. The only control that we have is monitoring the water level in the vineyard and keeping that ground as as moist as possible because um, that that wet ground will prolong um, the, the bud break. So yeah, wow. scary time in the vineyard right now. Exciting, wow. but scary. Yeah, I know. It's so weird. Like even just everywhere we've been, the weather is changed. I think this is why so many people have had it. I know Nancy and I battled with a cold, not COVID, thankfully. Right. But it's this cold. And it's like everyone I've talked to is like, man, this is not going away. And I'm like, you know what? We've all been running around in masks, so your immunity's down. But the weather just has this damp, lingering cold thing. And I keep telling, telling my friends in Arizona, they're like, I'm like, oh, I want to come home. I want to come back to the desert. Nancy and I want to come home. And they're all, by the way, it's not any different here. <laughs> like, you know? I know. It is crazy. I had a bunch of my high school buddies come out to visit oh, me. Cool. They're they oh. came out for spring training and uh, we had a tasting over at the, there were about 14 of us had a tasting out at our tasting room. We were sitting on the patio and they were freezing and they were all from Chicago area and they thought they were coming out here for shorts and t-shirt weather and it, it's been chilly. Well, listen, Nancy and I are about to drive to Wisconsin, the northernest oh part of Wisconsin. So next time we are going to talk to you, we might have to find some ice water. <laughs> yes, it's going to be cold up there. Absolutely. I know. I know. That's the red wine weather is just like, you know, but that's what I want to get into is like spring is coming. I think, you know, like I know in Southern Arizona, like the Kosho Peak area, uh, that state park's already been in full bloom with yes. poppies. Yes. So some it's areas beautiful. have got wildflowers, but then it may like snow on the parade a little bit. Right, yeah, right, right. I drove... I drove by Picacho Peak um, this past week and the oh. whole hillside is all yellow. It was beautiful with all the wildflowers up there. It was uh, really pretty. Well, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that will get it as much as like Cochise Valley. Cochise, right. you guys start to be in the sky mountains and, you know, I always talk about your area. Like, the you know, I you know I love the Chiricahua area. Right. It's like right. the Cochise stronghold and the history and just... But it is really beautiful. Those hoodoos with snow, like that's a oh, whole other. Yeah. It's, it's the mount, sky islands. The mount, that's what I should say. Sky islands. Yeah. The mountain behind you, the Chiricahua Mountains mm -hmm. behind you is totally covered with snow right now. No way. Almost, yeah, almost down, all the way down to the horizon. It's beautiful. So, okay, so you get through spring, you get your bud break, right? The, yes. As you want it. And yes. you have to monitor the weather, which is always changing so you really can't yes. tell really because even while we're watching this wisconsin thing i was thinking about this like a few days ago it was like we were going to drive into a snowstorm right now it's kind of right. subsided tomorrow it could change so is that what it's like for you guys at the vineyard it's like you, it's absolutely like, is there any, any point even monitoring anymore <laughs> I don't know. well it's like you, you try to have, to have, have you have to, you feel like you have some control at least by watching it and you know, but there's nothing, there's nothing to prepare for, you know? So we yeah. know that snow is probably coming tomorrow and it's going to, if it snows, it's not as cold. Mostly, oh, that's you, know, good then. you know, so if it snows, then it's not below 32 degrees, which is great. And, um, but yeah, this time of year is very critical. If we can survive, get a nice bud break and get into uh, April uh, without, you know, any hard freeze, we should be okay until the monsoon. Then we have to worry again over all the rain during harvest. But um, yeah, we just need to get a good bud set. Uh, okay. So if we can survive March, then we can breathe a little bit and wait towards harvest. So it's an exciting time, but nerve wracking. So going into wanting to have a drink over nerves, but <laughs> yeah. when do when I want to talk about spring wines because I feel like that's when we start getting into the lighter wines. But when right. is as you as a as a winery, um, 
I was looking on Facebook again. I was like following what you guys are doing and up to. And I'm like, I want to go. I want to go see Peggy. Yeah. Um, but it looked like you've got new wines out. So like, tell yes. us, tell us. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, when, when there's not a lot to do in the vineyard, there's a lot to do in the winery. And so um, we are spending all of our time really catching up in the winery to get the winery, uh, uh, all the wine out of the barrels into the bottles so that we can get prepared for a uh, harvest. And so kind of an exciting thing we did, you know, cause we're so young in comparison to a lot of wineries around the world um, is that we did extended barrel fermentation or extended barrel aging of our 2017 wines, because 2017 was a really incredible harvest for us. We had a lot of wine. And so since we're so young, we wanted to see how well our wines evolved in the barrel. And so we're just now beginning to release our 2017 wines. So I have been uh, working, Kurt and I have been working on those wines and tasting them and deciding what, what we want to bottle. And so the first one out of the shoot is, um, our, is going to be our 2017 Syrah. And we're waiting for our labels to come in and it's an exciting yeah, yeah yeah bring it bring it to mama yes yes <laughs> you know it I is love a, my Syrahs. <laughs> you know and and i tasted it um in 2019 and again in 2020 and again in 2021 and when a couple of weeks ago when we made the decision as to what is going in the bottle i went back and looked at what i said about that wine and it was spot on, almost very consistent over the time period, which is exciting because we take real meticulous notes when we're tasting the wine in the barrel. So that's one of the first ones we're going to have this month in March released for our wine club um, package. We also have um, coming out. So, wait, so that's a wine club only. So the, the no, no, it's, no. oh, it's okay. coming out to the wine club first uh, at the okay. end of March. And then as soon as they decide they're not going to buy it all, <laughs> then we we release it to the public. We got plenty of it. So okay, we'll so release one, it to but one club first makes sense, right? So yeah. yeah, that's your your supporters and you know, yes. uh, so so the Syrah. So I want to go back to your notes on this because I find this really fascinating that you're taking notes. Because I always thought like if you well, it's kind of like if you the bottle open for a little while then the wine changes its profile so in the barrel you want this consistent you want it to hold up to the same consistency of when you first barrel decided it was ready to be you know bottled the first time so you want it to stay consistent but not really change too much is that no. am i getting that wrong? yeah kind of it will change absolutely it will change okay. but um and what you're tasting it um as you know, we age our wines for a very long time anyways. So this was extended even probably a year more than we typically um, age our red wines uh, for that. Because we're testing it to see how, how it evolves. Yeah. And so a few years ago when we tasted it, it was it was tasting really nicely. You know, so we 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 tasted the fruit forward, uh, the bright fruit in it. We were tasting the hint of oak that we had on it. We were tasting, it was um, still not totally integrated. That's why we wanted to continue to age it. So um, it was good, but it wasn't perfect yet. And then we tasted a year later, it still was evolving and getting more integrated and, and smoothing out. And uh, so that's what we're tasting for, not... Um, and to kind of think about how do we want to bottle it? Because, you know, we talked a while ago about blending. And so we're tasting maybe some Syrah in New American oak. We're tasting Syrah in neutral oak. We're tasting Syrah coming out of a, a one-year-old oak. So it, it and blending for us, since we don't make um crazy blends is how much, what percentage of the Syrah should come out of a new, new American oak and how much out of neutral oak. So is it a 70, 30 split? Is it a 40, 30, 
30, you know, out of the three types of barrels. So that's what we're kind of, that's our blending is how we're going to produce that final Syrah or whatever but you it only, is. It's not like you can just go, okay, let's go to the grocery store and get the next same ingredient. You right, I mean? exactly. Yeah. And, and, and we're tasting it. Should we add a little bit of petite Syrah into it? Or should we add a little bit of Grenache into it? But um, we did 100% Syrah. And it's, I think it's one of our best wines we've ever made. Oh my it's gosh, that. I want it. I want it. I want it. <laughs> Just right. like, you know, it. You know, I love your Syrahs. I mean, to me, I yeah. was like, I'll never forget that day tasting. I'm like, everybody just leave me alone. Just let me sit with this wine. And yeah. no, you can't have any, but I do want to share with people because it's wine is best with friends. It yeah. is. Exactly. Yeah. Ex exactly. Friends that appreciate good wine. <laughs> yes, exactly. And if you don't, don't take it. No, right. <laughs> Just give me a little sip, but you know. Drink the so, box wine. Listen, I'm a good pusher. I try to, you know, turn everybody into winos, but no. Right. <laughs> but, but what's your next wine that you're releasing? I want, you so more? we, yeah, we decided to make another Sky Island Grenache, which mm -hmm. uh, we put our Sky Island label on a, on the Grenache when it's just pure grapes that we got that year. And so there's no influence from any oak. They're all on neutral barrel. And it's just really a wonderful fruit forward, great spring wine. That's what so I was going to say. Isn't that kind of neat how it goes from holiday season to Correct. spring? Correct. Oh, that's a year round wine, actually. I, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's very versatile, like a Pinot Noir, such mm -hmm. a versatile uh, grape and, and wine. And we're also doing a 2017 Grenache, which has that kiss of oakiness to it, not over the top oakiness, but it's, it's reminiscent of a Oregon Pinot Noir that has a, that little bit of oakiness to it. It's all oh, up. My gosh, it's awesome. Yeah. Mm. We did make a blend. We are going to make a blend. And it is um, Grenache and Petite Syrah. And I believe we put a little Syrah on it. Now I can't, re um, yeah, we put uh, some neutral Petite Syrah uh, and um, some neutral Grenache and neutral Syrah on that. I believe is the formula that we did for the blend. And so that's exciting. So wait, so when we come see you in the, in the vineyard, right at the winery, <laughs> Do you have like the one of those science labs with test tubes and all kinds of? Oh like, yeah, yeah, so cool. Oh yeah, and, and yep. And this this time um, for the final kind of tasting before we made the decision about what we're putting in the bottle, I had my staff participate in oh, cool. the the tasting so that they could provide their input. Yeah, you know, we make the final decisions, but it's good to get input. So. Remember, I told you the last three years or so we we tasted it every year, and we had people help us with that and provide their input at those different stages to see what they're tasting. Because we're not trying to make wine only for us; right. we're trying to make wine that is appealing to a, a broader audience, obviously, because we have to sell wine. Um, but we take that input that we get from a lot of different people. And then we make the final decisions about the wine. Oh, so you're crowdsourced in a way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, it, nice, though. and it helps my staff and it, 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 because then they, they also get excited about the wine when it comes out and because they participated They're part in a of way. the process. I think They're people part of the want to be part of it. It's like, Ooh, I want to see how it all came out. Now, do you have a, a your own like Peggy and Kurt barrel? Like you know, we don't. We we don't. I think you um, need a Peggy and Kurt. Maybe we should in reserve. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should. Oh. Um, but no, we haven't done that yet. And uh, one of the exciting things, and this is perfect for what we're going to talk about today. It's not a 2017 like I. Uh, these other wines are all 2017, but it's a rosé. Um, oh. We are about to release, and this is a 2019. Look at that color. Isn't that a gorgeous color? Ooh, I like that. That's pretty. It's a hundred percent Grenache, um, and made in the rosé style. Obviously, we talked about that in the past about how rosé is made, and um, this ah uh, is a sexy, sexy wine. This is this is perfect for springtime um, foods that we're going to. What, talk what would about. you say on the level of? Because I, you know, when there's. Rosés, I like them when they're like a little, they're, 
they've got that not it's like this balance of tart dry not too sweet but sweet you know what i mean yes there's, this this yeah there's a whole spectrum because you could have you like know. a little mineral going in there too correct this is more this is more Pro, um, provence style this is zero residual sugar so there's no sweetness to this but it's just all fruit that's it is just awesome that's my so you, nice, so, you, yeah you pick up strawberries and really bright mm -hmm. fruit on it but then it it lingers so it makes a great food pairing wine so yeah i would choose a rosé for some of your salads that you might be preparing this spring or that strawberry shortcake that you might be um, having for dessert, Ooh. this rosé would be ideal. I have a question on pairings. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Melissa's produce, we've been doing trying some of their specialty produce and their snacks. And yesterday I tried their dried chickpeas, which has got a chili, spicy chili flavor. So it's like a nice snack. Right. And it's got garlic and oh, dry. Oh, and we tried it with a chocolate stout that our friends make over at Lion and Rosebud and Breakfast. Yeah. Oh, no. Because there was yeah. a spice. But their ch that stout was like a chocolate stout. So, like, wow. the first you have the spice of the chickpea, and then the chickpea goes into that sweet, earthy texture as you start to chew. So, it it was like the most amazing pairing. You wow. know, it's like, you know, you guys talk about corn dogs. I'm going, okay, we're, we're yeah. going to try this. And it worked <laughs> and I couldn't believe it. So what wow. I was wondering is, so anyway, we've got these baby beets from them okay. that are already pre-steamed and pre, and we're going to, we're doing some mm. salad things. So I was wondering like, would a beet, like not, you just have a little beet on a nice fresh salad, just a little, because yeah. beets, a lot of people put beets on their salads in the spring. What, what wine would you say would go with, with that? I, it, and again, it all depends on the dressing you're going to put on it too. Okay, if, yes. if you're going to put a creamy or you're going to put a, a vinegar based um, dressing on it, I might try. And that would depend on the wine as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Good point. Yes. Pick, as I always say, pick the <laughs> wine first. I learned it from you. <laughs> yes. Yay. Good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. Always pick the wine first and then uh, create your meal. So I might try a Grenache, the medium body yeah. bread on that. Or um, if you're going to stay light with the dressing and the beets have kind of that um, earthiness, a little yes, bit of earthiness nice. to it. Um, and if you want to put those spicy chickpeas on it, right, where they chickpeas, um, then maybe go to a Sauvignon Blanc or our Vignette that is crisp and light that can stand up to the spiciness of... Oh, because they could be like the croutons. I never even thought right. of that. Right. Oh, Peggy, we're, we're going. We're Eat. going to town. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. I like yeah. this. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. So, um, you know, think about the widgets, as I always say, that you might put on that salad or the dressing that you might put on that salad. So if you're staying light and... Um, you know, one really the greens to pop uh, that you might, the bitterness of some of the leafy greens that you're having in a salad and the acidity of maybe what you're putting on the salad, then stay with the beignet and Sauvignon Blanc because they have those aromas of lemon grass and yeah, honeysuckle, yeah. which really pair ni nicely. So now I want avocado. Light. I want avocado yeah. and a little bit of strawberry in there. Oh yeah, that. that would be awesome. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, so you ooh. can go with those white wines or you can go a little bit with the light reds with that. Well done, man. Yeah. I know it doesn't matter. You always know what to pair. So well, this is exciting <laughs> that the rosé is coming out. So I see that being a nice white uh, wine for spring and summer. All absolutely. Right to Thanksgiving for turkey time. Yes, I absolutely. It, it um you know, especially when you're making a Grenache or a, a fuller bodied rosé like this, it's just a beautiful pairing. You know, I've talked in the past about um, the grilled rack of lamb, which a lot of yeah. people start thinking about that as we get towards Easter and 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 uh, grill pulling out the grill a little bit more. So mm. this would be great with seafoods that you might be or fish that you might be grilling. Um, now or all the way up to a rack of lamb. What about ham? Some people do ham on Easter. Some people do ham. Absolutely. And Easter this year is late. It's all the way in April. But mm. um, 
Yeah, I would do a rosé, a sparkling wine mm. would be great. And everyone and, does know, those deviled eggs. We could do some like, like a nice Viennet, wouldn't you think, or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely kind of, you know, it's funny. I don't know about other parts of the country, but in Arizona, a lot of our restaurants are having this, you know, smorgasbord of deviled eggs. They're making deviled eggs as appetizers and they're making them so many different ways. Oh my gosh, that, jalapenos, I can see yeah, it now. Exactly, they're just all these flavors. So they're not the more traditional kind of way that we grew up having our deviled eggs, but um, yeah, yeah, they're having fun with them. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, it's it's so interesting about being around the you know different places and you know what you can do with wine pairings. And then oh, we're we're doing this over here and this. Well, it's going to be green chilies if you go to New Mexico, right? You're going to have right. jalapenos and in, in Arizona. I, I I love it. So, do you have any more coming out, or or do I have to like? Yes. Wait? No, we have more. So. You know, again, we're doing a Sky Island, um, a, a Petite Syrah. So our Petite Syrah in 2017 was so flavorful and big and bold. And the Sky Island Petite Syrah is obviously neutral barrel because we don't want any of that um, barrel influence. And it is just rich and wonderful. So we did a Sky Island Petit, or we're, we're going to release a Sky Island Petit Syrah and a 2017 Signature Petit Syrah, which is your, one of your favorites. So that's a 100% Petit Syrah, full bodied on American oak. It's just, it's, oh. Do you awesome. know, this is like the best news of 2020. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new, 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 really good wine. I mean, come on, everyone. This is the exciting thing of life. <laughs> right. And because, again, that was a, such a big year for us. Um, so we have, let's see, what is that? That's six new wines coming out out of our 2017 red wines um, that we extended their barrel aging. And I think it's been a fun experiment. We'll see what the people say. And we'll see what our customers say and our wine club members say, but um, I'm excited about them. But we have also white wines um, coming out besides our rosé, uh, which is our light red. We have a 2019 Sky Island Vignette that we nice. just released. Um, and for a, a, a vignette that was on stainless steel, it's full-bodied. It's just really this wonderful food-friendly wine um, with really nice uh, um, citrus notes to it. So we're excited about that. Well, that's good for spring. I mean, yeah. Yes. Would, now, now, would you put like mandarin orange slices on a salad? Like maybe an Asian salad with it? Oh, an Asian, Asian salad. salad would be beautiful with, with that. almond so you slices get, and... Yeah, you get a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of spiciness to that salad. And with that vignette. It's lunchtime here, Peggy. What are you doing? Uh, uh oh, yeah, making you really hungry for lunch. <laughs> no. Okay, and, so that's, that's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we also set aside um, in 2019, we had two barrels of vignette that we put in oak. And so, um, we blended those barrels together and we're making a new blend of what we're calling Rhyolite White. Oh, I like uh, that. Ooh. Isn't that nice? That I makes think, sense. Yeah. Right. right. And people may not know what Rhyolite is, but I know I've talked about it in the past. That uh, Cherokee Mountain behind you is was a volcano thousands of years ago. And it threw off this plume of really rich soils, but also granite, these this rhyolite granite that um, is just phenomenal. And, and it's all over our vineyard. And it's these big pieces of rock. And what's fun, it's, if you crack it open, on the inside of that rock are these all these sparkly purple and yes. you know, kind of like quartz, it looks like. It's just a gorgeous rock. But it's, it's great for our vineyard because it our wines are starting to pick up the minerality of our soils and it's just incredible. I think that's what it is in, about your wines is that it's, you, you're not like, you're going to be fruit forward, but that doesn't mean it's going to be like oversweet. You know what I mean? Right. So, right. I think a lot of times we think we should do that at some point, like these kind of taste like fruit forward. What is that? What does buttery mean? Like it is right. buttery, but why, you know, but like the fruit forward, I think a lot of times people, and they say big jammy, doesn't mean that it's necessarily 
like a spoonful of sugar in your work. Right. Right. You know, right. And that you guys have that amazing balance. When I when I just had this, uh, that's what, happy land. You know, it's like you have that minerality that just allow. It kind of is like the base of letting the. It's like refreshing at the same time. That Cor I, correct. You know? No, you're you're right on. You're right on because we want to make. Obviously, um, we grow incredible grapes and we are meticulous about our grape growing process. And so the quality of our grapes that come into the winery, we want to celebrate that. We don't want to um, hide that or or through um, blending kind of create something that is not what the vineyard gave us. And so we our winemaking process is to enhance the flavors of the grapes that we produce and really celebrate them, not disguise those those wonderful flavors we get. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So any it's more? Fun. So nope, that's it. So we have yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. six, seven, eight, nine new wines coming out um, this spring. So we're excited about that. So as you can imagine in the winery, yeah. it looks like a disaster because we have barrels coming down from all over the place because we're doing final racking. And we talked about racking in the past. We're doing final racking on a lot of those reds before we start um, deciding which barrels are going to go with which um, uh, wine that we're producing. So starting um, later in March, we're just going to be bottling, 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 bottling. And uh, so we're waiting for labels to come in uh, from production so that we can get these to the market in April and in May um, in time for uh, late spring and then into the summertime. So when you say it goes out in the market, so I know you get it, you've got your wine club, people can order online. Um, Correct. You can go to the winery at, at the at tasting room in Scottsdale. But are you um, available in any stores or restaurants locally, or is it mostly just go right to the winery? You're always going to have a better time coming straight to us and having sure. us ship to you. Um, you're probably going to get the best price if you buy direct from us. We're not in stores again because I'm a control freak. I don't want my um, want my bottles of wine on a bottom shelf somewhere collecting ducks, dust. I don't want to move move our wine. Uh, we are in selected restaurants here in Arizona and okay. resorts in Arizona, but we don't um, wholesale out of the state around the country. So we're a small people, lot winery too, you know. So yeah, we're really we're special. three. Yeah, we're. Yeah. we're Yep, we're we're three thousand cases, so we're a, a small boutique winery, um, but we have wine club members, probably in every state that allows us to ship to them. So something to remember for our guests are that because the weather changes, you know, it's going to get hot here fairly quickly. Uh, even though we're enjoying this winter weather, fairly quickly in uh, so mid May we have to quit shipping. So if you want to get through the summer with some of these wonderful wines that we're going to hit the market with, you need to order by mid-May so we can ship them to you. Otherwise, you have to wait till October again when it, uh, yes, it's a long drought. So you need to we, order your wine. We don't want the drought. We don't want no. the drought. We, we don't want that to happen. No. But, I, go ahead, sir. I get, it's so funny because I get this it's, it's so funny because I get this call from California, San Francisco area. It's a good customer of ours. And a mid beginning of May, he calls desperately. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know you have to quit shipping. I'm out of signature petite Syrah. You need to send up several cases so I can get through the summer. He's just like so desperate. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, but it is, but it, that's a thing. But you know, yeah. if you didn't have that that summer, you wouldn't make the good wine that you have, you know? That's right. So are, how, how are things in the tasting room? It looks like you've been doing chocolate events and oh my painting, God. corking yeah. event, all kinds of flower and corks and, you know. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, this is high season for us. So yeah. March, we have spring training baseball. So we, we went from Super Bowl to the golf tournament. Now we have the Arabian Horse or the Arabian Horse Show in Beautiful. February. Um, March is the the spring training all March. So we got people people coming to Scottsdale from all over the country um, 
through the springtime. So our tasting room is rocking and rolling um, all week and all, all week. And of course, you got all the bachelorette parties coming into town to celebrate uh, the upcoming nuptials. So a lot going on, which is exciting. Now, what is one of your favorite recipes for spring to kick off spring? We want to like, I... what would you serve at a spring party? Because people are getting together for brunches, like those late, you know, I love those right. lazy spring sit outside yeah. with wine and some just not too heavy food but that beautiful weather what do you like to, to well share? i you know i like we know go, you like a party <laughs> i love a party absolutely i love a party um so i would you know kebabs are great you know putting all kinds of things with fresh vegetables that you're getting from the farmers market because a lot of at least in arizona the farmers market start opening up in march also, and uh, so grabbing the freshest vegetables, and maybe if uh, if you're a straight vegetarian, you put all vegetables on your kebab, or if you want to cut up some great chicken, or even fish, like a, a shrimp or um, tuna or some uh, kind of, put those on the kebabs and just grill it and keep it as as light and fresh as possible. Pork. Pork and pineapple. We used to do a Pork lot of that. Pork and pineapple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that or, would be nice. Right. Or I like this time of year also you're getting, you can pick up some wonderful halibut or from the Northwest or you can get wonderful tuna, thick, um, you know, steak tunas and uh, just very simply uh, put a little marinade on that or in some spices and throw that on the grill and open up a Grenache or Pinot Noir and heaven. <laughs> I like that. Was that light kind of grilling, but it's kind of like light finger food kind of, you know. Right, right. Ooh, I love the kebabs. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I love them because you can serve a, a di multiple different kinds. And then you can also put dipping, a dipping sauce on the side instead of actually slathering it on the kebab. Mm -hmm. You can give people choices of how they might want to uh, enjoy it. Okay, so now what, okay, so we charcuterie boards can come up, but it's going to be a little bit more lighter cheeses, maybe lighter kind of meats, right, for the charcuterie? Yeah, like, yeah uh, I would, so I would. Right, right. Um, some fruits, some lighter cheeses, some fresher cheeses, maybe. Um, but I like big cheeses year round. I want, so that, I want brie oh, too. I want my brie. brie. Yeah. You must have uh, brie. There's no charcuterie or, board without cheese, without brie. Yeah, but you know, go for the double or triple cream, uh, brie, if you're okay. going for it, you know, splurge. <laughs> I, I, I'm all for it. Cause I think that's the other thing is like your charcuterie board could go by season. And we've got your tips, everyone, right. you know, for the holidays, but it really, you can look at what's in season for your area. I was thinking about you the other day because in South Africa, there was this one lady that taught me how to do this as a kid, because they used to always have these big parties and people would bring different things. And she would make a salad according to what was in season, which pretty much right. everything was in season there. But she would make pictures out of the vegetables and fruit and mix it. So like you'd have a palm tree, and then she would like cut things accordingly. It was oh, just neat. a different way of eating. It made, I, as a kid, it worked on me. Oh yeah. <laughs> I oh yeah, you'd want to eat it. Yeah. Yeah, so I was wondering about like, just for spring, it'd be kind of cool to do like little rosettes, little things, like fun things to kind of be like, hey, we're alive still. You know, we made it through winter, especially Absolutely. this year. God, we got to yeah. celebrate spring. Absolutely. And we do charcuterie classes. Um, oh. I have a gal. I don't do them. I have a gal, Liza, who works for me and also has a company on the side. And she does charcuterie boards for parties and things, um, those huge charcuterie tables for okay. events. But uh, but she does that. She makes little rosettes out of salami and, and oh. does all these incredible um, uh things out of out of the food to make it more appealing and pleasing and things like that so she teaches people it through our classes how to do that so you can um excite your friends when they when you put together a board i, so. I need help with that that's yeah. good. like that that's not something i can just you know me and me and a knife are not necessarily the best thing on, <laughs> on the planet because i will be having wine while i do it you know so right. that's exactly if you're gonna make a charcuterie board you must have wine 
and music. Uh-huh. So yeah, that, uh-huh. I love that. And it's full side time now in, in Arizona. It's well, uh, not today. almost, yeah, almost it is. But yeah, people will start getting in their pools in March, mid-March, late March, and definitely in April, it'll be warming up. So um, so a couple tips when you're thinking about spring and wine and food pairings. Um, always remember that your wine should be a little bit more acidic acidic than the salad or the food that you're going to um, put it with so that you balance that uh, bitterness of the leafy greens or balance whatever food you're going to put it with. Um, Think about the aromas because, you know, you not only uh, enjoy food by what you taste, but what you also, the aroma of it. Um, The richness of the food, so like uh, a rich tuna, which is bolder or or richer than maybe a a sea bass, will also help you choose the wine a little bit better. So think about the richness of it. Um, And then think about how you're going to season it, the food. Like if you're going to do that grilled uh, bracola Provencal lamb that I talked about in in the past, which has all that herb de Provence, lavender, margarine, rosemary, thyme, oregano kind of spices on it. And then lamb with the richness that it creates. And if you're grilling it, you're going to have the smoky flavor. So you need to choose a wine that's going to be a perfect harmony to all of those different flavors. So you might want to go to a more rich, complex Syrah um, with that so that those black and blue kind of fruit of the Syrah will kind of sing with those, all those herbs of the encrusted lamb. But uh, if you're, you know, in Arizona, we grill year round, right? But the rest of the country is just bringing their grill out to start grilling. And so maybe you're going to do a marinated flap steak, for example, um, you know, if you've marinated it, hopefully in the wine that you're going to also pour, right? So use the same wine or a similar wine. And uh, so you want to have, because that's a little bit fattier um, than what we've been talking about. So you want a wine to be able to cut through the fat of that flat flat steak or that grilled steak. So you want to get a wine with more tannins in it because that's going to cut through the fattiness. So you're going to choose a Cabernet Sauvignon or a Petit Syrah. And uh, then dessert. You know, I talked about the strawberry shortcake. Rosé, perfect pairing for um, a rosé because it's zero, this is zero residual sugar and you got the sweetness of the strawberries and the creaminess of the the whipped cream that you need to marry a wine with. So those are just some tips. We just got some shortcake from Hawaii from a friend just came oh, back wow. from Hawaii and brought us some shortcake. And it's made with macadamia nuts and they're all different mm. colors, little little pineapple. I wish I had it in front of me right now to show you, but then now I know what to do. Now that's yes. good. That's going to be the way we do it. Ah, yes. All good, right, good, everyone. Good, good. Yes. Because I think it's fun to pair it. Like just I said, that stout and those chick- fried chickpeas, who would know? But you just got to think the different layers of each thing. Correct. Know? Exactly. And then just try it. Have a good time. You know? Exactly. And so you're going to, you're going to miss every once in a while. It won't be a good pairing, but, but that's oh how well. you learn. But that's, that's how, how you learn. learn. But that's exactly. what spring is that time. It's the rebirth. It's things for like, let's jump out and try something. It's full of the joys of spring. So try right. new things and start blending, start pairing and tasting and go crazy. Have a good time. You know, exactly. You After bet. This winter, all of us want to have a good time. We want some sunshine. We want um, some wine. That's what um, we want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peggy, always a pleasure having you on this show today. Uh, everyone keep up with Peggy at ldvwinery.com. She's here every first Wednesday because she likes to start off the month in a good wine way. So keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thank you so much, Peggy. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful month. Well, cheers to you. Cheers to you.